In 2015, American astronomer Tabitha S. Boyajian published a scientific paper announcing the discovery of irregular light fluctuations in a star, including up to a 22% dimming in brightness. This star was subsequently named Tabby Star after her and is in the constellation Cygnus, approximately 1,470 light years from Earth. The irregular changes in brightness of this star have not been fully scientifically explained, but one interesting hypothesis proposes that the dimming of light is due to a structure like a Dyson sphere that obscures visible light. The Dyson sphere concept originates from the thought experiment of Freeman John Dyson, 1923 to 2020, a British-American theoretical physicist and mathematician, who proposed how a spacefaring civilization could meet its energy requirements with a hypothetical megastructure comprising of orbiting solar power satellites that completely encompasses a star and captures a large percentage of its power output. The implication of this hypothesis is that there could be some form of alien civilization inhabiting Tabby's star. To comprehend technologies like the Dyson Sphere, a framework for understanding the evolution of extraterrestrial civilizations is required, and this framework is provided by the Kardashev scale. The Kardashev scale is a system designed to gauge the technological advancement of a civilization by evaluating its capability to harness and utilize energy on a cosmic scale. Through the initial Kardashev scale and its subsequent developments, it becomes feasible to classify alien civilizations based on their origins, technologies, level of computing, energy usage, longevity, travel capabilities, potential for extinction, and other factors. This metric was introduced and subsequently named after Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kardashev, 1932-2019, based on a 1964 paper titled, Transmission of Information by Extraterrestrial Civilizations. His seminal work has inspired attempts to detect super-civilizations and to guide the SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, programs. He initially proposed a classification of civilizations into three types, Type 1, Type 2, and Type 3 civilizations. Over time, other people have added to the classification, adding Type 0 as well as Type 4 to Type 7 to the framework. Our human civilization is currently considered a Type 0 civilization. A Type 0, preplanetary, is any civilization which has yet to reach the capabilities of the Type 1 civilization, which is the ability to tap on, use and store all the energies of a planet. As of 2020, our energy consumption is approximately 2 times 10 to the power of 13 watts, which will place us approximately as 0.73 on the Kardashev scale. We would need to boost our current energy production over 100,000 times to reach Type 1. A Type 1, planetary, civilization can harness and store the equivalent of all the energy reaching its home planet, allowing it to become interplanetary. Theoretically, this is approximately equivalent to 10 to the power of 16 watts. Energy is primarily derived from sources such as fission, fusion power, and renewable energy. Such a civilization would possess the capability of interplanetary spaceflight, likely initiating the colonization of other planets within the same star system and achieving the ability to communicate with these interplanetary bases. Interplanetary trade and multiplanetary governments are probable. On its home planet, megascale planetary engineering projects are likely in place, with the potential to manage natural phenomena such as earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Additionally, medical breakthroughs may have been achieved, leading to the elimination of disease and the slowing of aging. A Type II, stellar, civilization can directly utilize all the energy produced by a star, achieved through the construction of a hypothetical device like the Dyson Sphere. By doing so, they would surpass a Type I civilization by a factor of 10 billion, reaching a consumption of 10 to the power of 26 watts. By this stage, the civilization should be capable of interstellar travel and communication and begin exerting influence over star clusters in its vicinity. One conceivable technology at this stage of evolution is the ability to terraform planets to render them habitable for their species. For those acquainted with the TV show, Three Body Problem, at a minimum, an advanced civilization must advance faster than the frequency of extinction-level cosmic catastrophes, such as comet or asteroid impacts. 
They should possess the ability to vaporize objects on a collision course with their planet or even divert other planets into the path of the colliding object. If all other options fail, they must have mastered space travel to evacuate their home planet. Additionally, they should be capable of foreseeing the onset of ice ages and modifying the climate beforehand to prevent them. These capabilities should begin to emerge in a Type 1 civilization but would likely only become firmly established once a civilization reaches Type 2 status. Theoretically, at Type 2, nothing known to science should have the capacity to render the civilization extinct, except perhaps in the case of an interstellar war with other advanced civilizations. A Type 3, galactic, civilization possesses the capability to capture and utilize all the energy emitted within its galaxy, including from celestial bodies such as stars and black holes, and become intergalactic. One possible ability is faster than light travel, possibly using wormholes. In terms of power utilization, this is equivalent to about 10 to the power of 37 watts. Besides power utilization, another way to understand the Kardashev scale is proposed by astronomer Guillermo A. Lamarchand, born 1960, who compares the speed at which a volume of information equivalent to 100,000 average-sized books can be transmitted across the galaxy. A Type II civilization can send this data using a transmission beam that lasts for only 100 seconds. A Type III civilization can send the same amount of data to the entire observable universe with a transmission time of 3 seconds. In his 2011 book, Physics of the Future, an American physicist, Dr. Michio Kaku, born 1947, proposes that if we increase our energy consumption by 3% per year, we will likely reach Type 1 civilization status in 100 to 200 years, Type 2 in thousands of years, and Type 3 in 100,000 to a million year. Kardashev is more optimistic, he believed it would take humanity 3,200 years to reach Type 2, and only 5,800 years to reach Type 3. Once we surpass Type 3 civilizations, it becomes challenging to conceive the power of Type 4 to Type 7 civilizations. A Type 4, universal, civilization can control the energy equivalent of its home universe and possesses the ability to instantaneously travel across it, primarily through manipulating the fabric of spacetime. A Type 5, multiversal, Civilization acknowledges that the home universe is not the sole universe and that numerous parallel universes exist within the multiverse framework. In the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, whenever the universe faces a choice of paths at the quantum level, all possible outcomes of quantum measurements are physically realized by the universe splitting into parallel universes. Each parallel universe realizes one of the possible quantum outcomes. A Type 5 civilization is one that can transcend their native universe and explore the multiverse. As such, they should already have possessed the ability to travel through time into the future. Such a civilization may also be able to simulate or custom build their own universe. Our current universe may have been created by a Type 5 civilization. A Type 6, Megaversal, Civilization recognizes the presence of simultaneous multiverses, known as megaverses, where there are infinite instances of all possible pasts and futures for which the civilization can dwell in. Lastly, a Type 7, Omniversal, civilization denotes a civilization with an almost godlike ability to manipulate the omniverse which is made up of all universes, multiverses, and megaverses.